Hey guys, it's Matt with bleepinjeep.com and today we're going to be installing a large capacity fuel tank into the zombie jeep. 32 gallons in fact, because when you're running from zombies, you don't want to have to stop and get gas. Alright, so this tank is sponsored by Sunset Metal Fab. Uh, they offer this tank, which is the AMC2 and all kinds of other great uh, huge tanks for all of your needs. So check them out at sunsetmetalfab.net. Also do check out my website, bleepinjeep.com, for all the best off-road videos on YouTube, none of the boring stuff. We've got hats and t-shirts, discount coupon codes, all kinds of great stuff, bleepinjeep.com. Do subscribe right here to the YouTube channel, it's free, and check out the Facebook page as well. All right, let's get started, guys. All right, so check out this tank. It's much bigger than the stock Cherokee tank, but it doesn't, doesn't take up quite that much room just because it fills up all of the uh, little nooks and crannies that the other one doesn't. Um, it's made by Sunset Metal Fab. Like I said, this used to be a Northwest Metal Products tank. I think Sunset Metal Fab bought them out. And um, so it's the same tank. It's called the AMC2 and it fits, uh, I think, 84 to 95 Jeep Cherokees, something like that. Uh, but they do make other tanks for you as well. Now, the directions that come with the tank, I've never installed one of these tanks before, so I don't really know what I'm doing. And these are the directions. There's only one small picture right here. I like lots of big pictures and in color, sometimes video, as you know. Uh, so, I have no idea. I, I can't even read, let alone figure this out. But uh, we'll try and get through it together. And then after we do, uh, we'll have a video for everybody else who wants to do it. So, uh, the tank comes with all the parts that you need. It comes with... Uh, bunch of nuts and bolts and gaskets, zip ties, uh, it comes with it comes with a uh, ascending unit and it comes with an adapter for your new pump. Uh, you're going to use, I've already made a video taking out the old tank but you're going to use the old pump. Um, in this case this pump went out on me so I just went ahead and bought a new pump. Now you can buy when you go to uh, an auto parts store you can buy this whole unit uh, or you can buy just the pump so I just bought just the pump so we're gonna use that pump and I think the foot is the only thing that we're gonna use off of the old tank everything else uh, comes with the kit and it also has hoses and it's got some new uh, brackets uh, to mount it up in there now the hard part is gonna be figuring out where all this stuff goes. But uh, bear with me, we'll get it all situated, and if it looks like I don't know what I'm doing, it's because I don't. All right, so like I said, I have a video on taking out your stock uh, fuel tank and uh, this sending unit and assembly here. So if you need to watch that, go ahead and watch that first. Now the next thing we're gonna do is to install the, the fuel pump. And like I mentioned, you can use the old one, but uh, I went ahead and bought a new one because this one was going out. I could hear it. So the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to put this. Uh, this kit comes with a little wire at the bottom here, and that's going to be to hold the pump. So then we're going to cut this to length right here, attach that. This red wire is going to go to the positive on the fuel pump. And then we're going to take the negative off of the stock uh, fuel pump here. We're going to take that off and we're going to attach that up to this wire right here. So we're going to have a negative to negative and we're going to put the ring terminal on here and go to the pos positive end. Alright, now you've got some adjustments right here. You can uh, loosen that and move the hose up and down. And you can loosen this screw and move this uh, brass piece up and down. What you're looking for is to get it the right depth of the tank. So the directions say 13 inches. Actually when I measure the tank it looks to be about 13 and a quarter. 
but um, so somewhere right around 13 or 13 and a quarter for this particular tank uh, you want that to that foot to sit right at the bottom at 13 inches so that looks that's 13. I'm going to move it up just a little to about 13 and a quarter. That way we'll get uh, the full the full tank. It'll suck right off the bottom uh, so you'll get all of the fuel out. Alright, now I'll attach, uh, I'll cut this red wire to length here. And then I'm going to put a ring terminal on it so that we can put it on the positive right there. Then I'll do the same thing with this black wire. I took off the stock pump there and I will attach it from the ground here to the ground right here. Now I use some zip ties to uh, secure that pump on there. And I'll do the same for the wires, just in case here. Trying to make sure that those aren't touching any metal. I don't want them to vibrate through. Alright, now that sucker is ready to go in. The only problem I'm having is that the little foot I've got, it, uh, it goes on the bottom there, but it's not a tight fit. I've got two of them and neither one fit tight. Now if I bought a new one I'm not sure if it would fit tight or not but uh, I think what I'm going to do is use this uh, Permatex Forma gasket just to kind of glue that on there because at the moment I can't even get that down into the tank without it without it falling off like that. So I just need it to stick long enough to set down on the bottom of the tank. Once it sets there then it'll get pressed in place by the rest but right now I can't even you know get it into the bottom now I checked and this form of gasket is uh, is safe for gasoline environments so uh, but I'm not going to use much of it just enough to hold it there until it sets on the bottom of the tank Okay, now while that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and install the other stuff. Right here you've got the sender, right here you've got the evap, and then the uh, pump goes right here. So let's install the sender here. Now on the stock tank, the sender and the pump are one unit. Now this uh, gas tank separates the two. And it doesn't really say about orientation, but I'm assuming that we're going to put it in there like this. Now if you look in here, you'll see that there are baffles inside here. And looks like it's going to point this way. Actually, I'm guessing that's why it says there's little arrows that point that way. I guess that's what that means. All right, so make sure that's tight on there. They've even marked a line right there where that should be for this tank. And then we're going to put the gasket in place here. Put it through. Make sure it's pointed the right direction. Alright, so I put that gasket on there and I pushed the, uh, the screws through. But this is where it gets a little confusing those aren't uh, perfectly centered around there so there's only one way that this can go in it just so happens that it goes in this way and the sender needs to be facing this way so what I'm going to do is uh, unscrew this and maybe I can turn that around I've made a mark here that mark is supposed to line up with that mark but I need to turn that uh, the float around all right, so that wasn't a big deal. Looks like I just needed to uh, rotate the sender around 180 degrees. Then I tighten this nut back down, and now I can go ahead and uh, tighten it down, looks like. All 
All right, now for the evaporator valve. The kit comes with the rubber grommet, and it also comes with the valve. Uh, it does say that you need to lubricate it. It says to lubricate the valve. I'm gonna go ahead and lubricate this grommet a little bit too, just to keep it from tearing or whatever. Put that in there. There we go. Simple enough. <clears throat> Alright, now I'm going to install the pump. Uh, the directions didn't say what to do with this line here. Uh, so it's the return line, I'm assuming. Uh, since it doesn't say anything, I'm just going to leave that alone there and that will return the fuel and just drop it in. So I'm going to put that in there like this. And. Now this is the front of the vehicle here, so I'm gonna have those lines pointed this way. All right, now if I had to do that again, I'd probably do the evaporator valve last. That way I could look down in there, make sure uh, everything was still good, and then just pound that in once I knew everything was, was good in there. But I guess you guys will know that. All right, moving on. Okay, now I'm going to take the uh, the stock wiring off of the stock fuel pump here, and I'm just going to cut it. And now we're going to put some uh, ring terminals onto there, so it'll look like this when we're all done. Three of those ring terminals on there. Okay, so now I've got three wires, one of which needs to go to the sending unit, to the ground, and to the uh, pump. But I have no idea which one goes where. So for that, I'm going to come back to the, um, to the stock fuel pump here and start testing some wires and see if I can figure out where they go. All right, well now I'm even more confused because I cut off uh, those wires and, uh, but anyway, after looking at another fuel pump that I have laying around, uh, this one's got orange, gray, and black, uh, and the orange is the, uh, the pump wire. On this one I've got here on the zombie Jeep, it looks like the black is the pump wire. And for some reason, the wires are a lot smaller gauge than the one on this other pump here, but uh, I don't know. I'll stick it in there and see if it works. So I'm going to assume that the black is the pump wire. So I'm going to put that here on the fuel pump. And then I know that the purple is the sending unit. I'm going to put that there. And that just leaves the ground wire, which I'm going to take this off and put it right here. There we go. Alright guys, now the tank is almost ready to go in. Uh, I am going to attach this hose here to the evaporator. And uh, that way I can attach that once I get it in there. Um, the stock lines for the... Uh, for the pump are probably going to reach, so I'm going to wait until I get that halfway up to install those. I also need to install the fill and the vent hoses over here, uh, and those, the directions say they need to be cut about two or three inches um, to keep them from kinking, uh, but it says to make sure you do a test fit before you do that, so I think that's going to be the hardest part of the install is getting those fill and vent hoses attached on both sides, but I think for now we're ready to put it in. Alright, so now we're under the Jeep here, and what I need to do is drill a hole. This is where the original strap came in right here. I need to drill a hole for this bolt, for the new straps, 
right under that original strap. That needs to be 7 sixteenths. I'm going to start off with a smaller bit and work my way up. There we go. Now I'll do the same on the other side as well. Alright, so I'm trying to figure out how to do this and I've attached the filler neck on the other end there and uh, put the hose clamps on the other end. These uh, hoses aren't very flexible so I'm not sure quite how this is going to work in here. That's why I've attached the other end first. I'll see if I can raise the tank up here in here and attach those hoses in while I'm lifting it up. Um, so here goes the tank. You probably can't see what I'm doing, but I am installing the lines for the tank, for the fuel filter, and the evaporator, and then I'll push it up into place, try to install the other lines. Now they ain't kidding when they said this thing takes up the entire area under here. It does. Alright, now I'm going to cut the uh, fuel filler line a little bit shorter and hopefully that'll be enough to still get the clamps on but still get it up in there. So I took about uh, what's that an inch and a half on this side and I took probably a half inch on the other side. We'll see if that's enough. Alright, now the only way I can figure to get that on there is to kind of uh, lift it up and tilt it, tilt it into place. So let's give that a shot. Alright, I've run out of room with the jack. Let's see if I can, uh, in the front we're going to use the stock bolts, uh, or hangers I guess you'd call them. And we'll see if I can push this thing up into place. Alright, check it out. Now all I have to do is make sure that I'm not going to be pinching any lines up here. And then I can tighten down the straps, starting in the back here. That ain't going anywhere. Alright, so I did end up having to take this back off on the, uh, the filler neck side. Uh, you need to do that last. I tried to do that first and that didn't work out. So uh, I had to put the, uh, the hoses, the filler hoses, onto the gas tank first. Then feed it through here. And now I can connect the filler uh, hose and then tighten the hose clamps underneath here. And then uh, put that little, there's a little cover plate over the top of that that protects the hoses. Um, so once I do that, then we'll be ready to fill it up and test it out. Well, all right guys, check it out. 32 gallons, so we don't have to stop for zombies. I'm interested to put some fuel in there, see how much it uh, takes to fill up. Also see what it looks like next to a stock uh, gas tank. And uh, see how well it drives. But I'll leave that for another video. Thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to check out this gas tank and more at sunsetmetalfab.net. Do check out my website, bleepinjeep.com, for all the best off-road videos on YouTube, none of the boring stuff, all kinds of other great stuff for you at uh, Bleep and Jeep. 
www.facebook.com. Do subscribe right here to the YouTube channel and check out the Facebook page as well for frequent updates. We'll see you next time. Okay guys, I hope you learned something there. I want to thank you for watching and thank you for subscribing and supporting the Bleep and Jeep channel. Now we've got a few options for you. First of all, these videos can be costly and take a lot of time to do. And if you want to contribute, you don't have to, but if you'd like to, the option for that is right over there. Also, we'd love for you to check out the t-shirt store. The link for that is right down there. We've got these t-shirts, these t-shirts, this hat, and more at bleepandjeep.com store or that link. Also, we'd love for you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. That option is right below. It's free. You get updates via email every week when we upload a new video. Also, we'd love for you to check out the website, bleepandjeep.com, or click this link right here. We've got all kinds of off-road videos. We've got how-to videos, off-road parks, and discount coupon codes, and more. So check that out, bleepandjeep.com. All right, guys. Thank you very much for subscribing and supporting, and we'll see you in the next video.